Russ Spencer, can you tell me about the program to the max? Well, it's something that we started 10 years ago. It was Roger Durling's great idea, as usual, and we decided we would like to have a sidebar section of the festival that was for people who might normally not come to a film festival. And it's just been extremely successful over the years. We always get all the best surf films that come out each year, premiere here, uh, including tonight's film, Storm Surfers 3D, which is, is a variety, or Hollywood Reporter just called it the best surf film since Step Into Liquid which is huge. And they just won Best Documentary uh, in the Australian o Oscars. That's what they said. Yeah, That's so really we're really excited. And this is just par for the course for To The Max. All right, well, great. Can't wait to see it. Thank you. Hello, Ben. How are you? Very well, thanks. Very good. Um, as a meteorologist, how fast are you seeing technology evolve in your field? Exponentially. It's, it's happening every day. There are new tools and new things that we're discovering that are helping us refine our forecasts. Uh, you know, many years ago, it would be down to a window of a couple of days, and then it refined to, you know, a, a day, and now we can pinpoint, you know, it's nearly to the hour when we know, yeah, when we know when the biggest and best waves, and also with the, with the conditions. There are, so, there are so many variables that create perfect surf or big surf, and... Um, most of the time we can really narrow it down and that, that makes it a lot easier for the film crews because we, you know, it, it, it reduces the amount of time we have to be on the road. You know, from a logistics point of view it's just invaluable to, to be able to do that. Amazing. Now is this technology available to all surfers it, that it, you just spread it with everyone? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's all available on the web. I mean, I suppose we've got a lot of time at our hands. I've, uh -huh. got, I've got a team of forecasters and we work together to refine that information. A lot of it is freely available. Um, but there's also a lot of gut feeling, you know, it's, it's it, after just years and years of surfing and years of forecasting, you tend to have a gut feel for which weather systems are going to produce those big waves or those perfect waves. Because um, it is a big gamble, you know. Some, sometimes you might have the big waves, but the winds will just be a bit weird or the tides will be a bit weird and, you know, it's something might be, won't be quite perfect. So there's always that gambling element. Do you get to go on location and actually see it? Yeah, absolutely. I'm normally there. I'm kind of flying around in the helicopter up, up above or, or on the... Yeah, it's it's. I'd, I'd actually rather be in the helicopter than... <laughs> Than down in the 30-foot surf, actually, but um, it, it's yeah, it's it's really good to, to, to see the um, you know the fruits of your labour, you know, like you know. So I get to go over and, and, and actually monitor the trends as a scientist. I mean, that's the, you need that data collection to happen to to verify the uh, the forecast to improve for the next time. So, from your experience, where are the biggest waves in the world? I think the biggest waves in the world are probably in the North Pacific. Really? Um, but that being said, we've Every ocean basin has the capacity to produce, you know, 100 foot waves or the, or the biggest waves possible. We haven't seen them yet. I think, that, that, you know, there are super storms out there that we haven't quite tapped into, but the North Pacific is very big. There are lots of amazing big wave locations along the Californian coastline yeah. and also in Hawaii. So, wow. yeah, we, we frequently see the b biggest and best waves in that region. Wow. Well, I bet when the perfect wave comes, you're going to be the man who finds it. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for your time. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Hello, gentlemen. I, I'm listening. I hear congratulations are in order. My goodness, your film. How great. I just spoke with Ben, and he was telling us about how he searches for the perfect giant wave. Can you gentlemen tell me, have you each ever experienced that perfect wave and what it feels like? No, you'll have to watch the movie for that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, no, 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 but it's the funny thing you say with Ben. Ben's difference is he's, yeah. he's, his research and so on goes on before the surf. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. And it's build up for him. He does, he's got a sleepless nights before. Oh. And then he actually gets to the day yeah. when we're, we're, and we go out and yeah. he goes to sleep. <laughs> and it's, that's when it starts. Oh, well, I mean, you told me he circles in a helicopter and watches from a safe distance. It's kind of <laughs> nodding off. But yeah, he, yeah, yeah. And also on the side of a boat and gets seasick <laughs> in amongst takes. Well, yeah. You guys are right in the thick of it. What does it feel like to somebody like, like like me, who's never done anything like that, explain what it makes you feel like. Alive. 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 Like every cell of the body. Well, you've got to be alive. You've got to, you can't turn your back on the ocean. That's, that's been said over and over and over again, and that's, that's the way it is. So you've got to yeah. always be eyes in the back of your head, like always responding and always looking. And, you know, if, as soon as you take your eyes off the ocean, boom, yeah. and it comes up in the movie, I've, Go over the falls on a jet ski, and that's what happens. No, but after riding it, it's the most complete, mm. uh, satisfying mm. feeling. It's like something, mm. the hot, extreme excitement, and then it, you just feel like you've actually achieved something. Yeah. Even though you may have not, 
you've ridden a big wave, but you felt like you've just saved the world, <laughs> right? <laughs> or you've fallen in. <laughs> you do, in a sense. It's oh. like, wow. you know what I mean? It's such a there. really cool. How long have you been surfing? Yeah, good question. Uh, I'm about to turn 47. I started when I was 11 years old, so 36 years for me. Oh yeah, I started when I was seven, and oh I'm God. and I'm 51. So we've got a few years up our sleeve here, you know. So obviously, ocean keeps you well preserved because you guys look fabulous. Oh, we still, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. all we just, the best thing is don't get mirrors. You don't look in the mirror, we're yeah, fine. Yeah. We feel like grommets, we're kids. Sweet. Yeah. No, Young, yeah. The ocean's your mother, and she's taking good care of you. Yes. Yeah, we can You're say right. that. She is a wonderful thing. She's a wonderful right. thing. But just like a mom, you can't turn your back on her. That's right. No, That's no, right. She, and she I knows what's going on. That's yeah. right. She knows. She's, she's okay. She can see. She yeah, can no, see. it's yeah. a woman. The ocean's definitely. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Can't wait to see the film. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Hello, gentlemen. How exciting about your film. Nice to meet you. I just spoke with your surfers and your meteorologists, so I've got a good idea of what's going on here. <laughs> um, the surf film genre has evolved greatly over the years. Um, can you tell me how the 3D has really added a great benefit for you guys as filmmakers? Uh, well, 3D, uh, I think when we first started 3D, we didn't realize how much it had affected documentary like real life filmmaking we've all seen it in big you know fiction feature films and we know how that all works but when you see um, just a, a conversation or an interview in 3d in a real life documentary environment I don't know it, it really resonated for Chris and myself and we sort of was like oh you know we can kind of get this working right we're sort of onto something here and um, unfortunately for us, that we picked pretty much probably the hardest medium in the world to shoot a 3D documentary in, the ocean. That was my next question. How did it challenge you as filmmakers? Yeah, it was, it was really hard. I mean, I think we try not to think about it. And I think when we were doing it, we were trying not... Well, you know, we were just so focused on trying to achieve the shots uh -huh. and achieve the coverage and not miss that moment, you know, that really critical moment, because it'll never happen ever again. Uh, and it's really technically difficult, so I think we were just so head down trying to make that happen that we didn't know how crazy it was. And it's only now that people see the film and they, so many people say to us that we're crazy and now I'm thinking, are we actually crazy or, or not? But, but you did it. And that's and you know, when you're going through it, you don't even realize, like you said. How long did it take you to make the film? Well, we had a we we shot a lot of like a couple of well four different television episodes along with the film as well. So we spent probably the best part of a year and a half putting the entire thing together um, from go to work. Just under two years, maybe. I don't know. I forget. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was a long time. Did you find one of your biggest challenges was in the cutting room trying to yeah, sure. figure out? Yeah, with any, I mean, a documentary, you make it in the cutting room. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, I mean, we focused really, really hard on just trying to capture everything when we were out in the middle of the nowhere and in the ocean, and, and, you know, didn't really have time to worry about the story too much until we got into the edit room, and then, and then when we laid it all out, we were kind of really blown away by what was in front of us naturally, and um, yeah, the cutting process was long. It was like five months, uh, and and but really creative and fun and challenging and yeah, we're really happy with the film. It's, it's a type of film that you don't have to be a surfer to okay. understand and to experience and have an emotional connection to and we're very much coming from, you know, we as filmmakers we come from a world of appreciating feature documentaries where, you know, the setting of, of the story isn't the most important thing, it's more about what happens and who the characters are and, and in, you know, you don't have to be a surfer to really connect with the film. We've had really great response from non-surfers. It's great. Excellent. Thank you so much, gentlemen. I look forward to it. Yeah, can't wait for you guys. Yeah, thank you for your time. Uh, we've got a big night ahead of us. We have the world premiere of the, of the movie that the Hollywood Reporter called the best surf film since Step Into Liquid. And that's Storm Surfers 3D from Australia. We have uh, the stars of the film are here, Tom Carroll and Ross Clark Jones. They will be coming up afterwards uh, for a Q&A. Uh, this is also a film that just about a half hour ago won the ACTA Award, which is the Australian Oscar for Best Documentary. 
That's not, that's not surf documentary, that's best documentary overall. So um, it's also, it's just, it's, it's a great, great film and we're really, really proud to have it here. We're really glad Accelerator Media, who's going to be distributing this later in the summer, brought this and allowed us to have this. And also, we have to really give a thank you to the Australians. There's a whole bunch of them that came. And uh, they are awesome guys, and they've made an awesome film. We're just really glad to welcome them to Santa Barbara. Uh, the film is also up for the 3D uh, Award, International 3D Award, which will be in a week. Uh, all the 3D movies will be judged, and that's just a week from here and from now in L.A. So this is up for that as well. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to bring on both of the directors of the film who are here. Justin McMillan, John Nelius, all the way from Australia. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. <laughs> Hey guys, uh, we want to keep it short. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, this is one of the best theatres I've ever seen. Um, the film's fun, don't want to say too much more. If you like what you see, yell out. Um, Ross and Tom are here and we'll get them up after the film and uh, find out why they did it. Yeah, thanks everyone for coming. I just wanted to thank uh, everyone from the Santa Barbara Film Festival for inviting us. And uh, yeah, thank you. Um, I really hope you guys enjoy the show and yeah, we'll come up again at the end and if you've got any questions on how we did anything or you want to um, yell abuse at Ross and Tom, feel free. I'll see you guys later. Okay, we're gonna bring out some VIPs. First of all, Ben Matson, please. Come on out. Christopher Nelius. Christopher, please. Justin McMillan, please. Ross. Clark Jones. And last but not least, Tom Carroll. Okay, so you guys are, are movie stars now, Tom and Ross. How does, how does that feel? How, how did you enjoy the making of a movie process? I know it's very involved and a lot of things go into it. How did you take to it? I hated the waiting. I can't wait for, you know, you're sitting around for these guys to get their stuff together. But, I mean, it was really worth it. And I want to thank you guys so much for that. I mean, thank you. Yeah, same here. I'm an I impatient wanna... person. But... These guys did so much work. I just, um, I mean, it was just a lot of fun. A bit of, you know, and like Ross said, had to do the same thing over and over again a few times. But, um, yeah, these guys, the main impatience they had for us and our, our action, our antics, you know, no, really an extraordinary experience. Did they do a lot of directing of you guys or did they let, let you go? I think the one thing that's been really good for us is that we've known each other for quite a while. They kind of understand us uh, and understand what, what we're like and how, how we deal with each other. Yeah. They realise we're unmanageable. Totally unmanageable. So, the unmanageable beasts, as they call us. <laughs> Yeah, like if anyone's uh, got teenage kids, this is exactly what it's like every day, all day, every day. Um, you even know, you, today. Yeah, even today. Right. You just, like, Ross went to go to the bathroom right when his name was getting called out. You know what I mean? Like, um, yeah, you just add a couple of hours on everything you try and do and you'll figure it out. So, yeah, the, you were also dealing with the unpredictability of Mother Nature. And Ben, why don't you talk about how you go about doing a big budget movie like this where not only do you have the unpredictability of these guys, but you never know what's going to come around and how did you make that all work? Yeah, it's quite difficult because 
the movie that we did before, we had a much smaller window and we confined ourselves to one location and we... we, we <laughs> <laughs> What's no, that? We're getting some alien <laughs> invasion here or something. It's The Exorcist. <laughs> okay. Background music is awesome. <laughs> something in the sound system. Let's just try to ignore it. Go ahead then. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> now, and last time we had a smaller window, only one spot, and I think with this movie we did it a lot better because we had a bigger window and we had five spots to choose from. So we could kind of pick and choose swells in Western Australia and also in the south and on the east as well. So mm -hmm. that reduced the risk a little bit. So obviously it all came together for you. I'm sorry? It obviously all came together for you in the end. Yeah, I'm really pleased. We had a really good active swell window, so there was, yeah, there were lots of swells, but it's, yeah, it's still very nerve-wracking. Every time we push the green button and we make that call, you know, that's just more money out of the budget. If the swell doesn't rock up, what are we going to do? And, and you two guys, how did, you, how did you know each other and how did you come to do the project together? Uh, Justin and Kristen. Yeah, well, we've done stuff with all these guys for Discovery Channel back in Australia before. Uh, we've done two shows um, in two different places, and one in New Zealand, one in Australia, and um, we were kind of all kind of friends before this all came along, and, and Justin and I, you know, for obvious reasons, wanted to make a show about these guys, because there's, you know, there's lots of people out there that surf big waves, but not everyone has that charisma. I, do you agree? I mean, they're, they're, they're two really special people. And what, what we really hoped for, as well as like having a great visual and exciting experience, was that you'd get the feeling that like you'd met these guys by the time you come out of the movie theatre, the same way that we, we have, get to know them as well. Yeah, my, uh, my wife describes Chris and I as uh, a gay couple with two teenage sons. <laughs> We're not gay. But we're not gay, we're not gay. We're totally not gay at all. There's anything wrong with that. You just came out. <laughs> okay. I just Ask want to thank question. one person. In, I want to thank you all for coming. Thank you thank very you. much, Santa Brother. Thank you. But there's... I mean, one person in particular for me personally is Bob McKnight from Quicksilver. Thank he, you, Bob. He sponsored me for 30 years this year. Thank Thanks, you, Bob. Bob. I mean, this is our gift to you, brother. Thank you, Bob. I mean, they try to get rid of me and they can't. And thanks to you, Bob. Thank you. But anyway, next. Next. <laughs> hey, also, just so you know, the, the film's going to be released in the US uh, this summer by Accelerator, so we don't have exact dates yet, but just keep an ear and an eye out on, on the internet and all that kind of stuff, and, yeah, and it's definitely can, gonna play. If you can help spread the word to people in areas that you think would enjoy the project, just, um, yeah, use the social network and help us get the word out, that'd be great, thank you. You know what I like best is hearing questions from the audience, because yeah. I mean, instead of us you know, talking about stuff you don't want to hear about, we don't know what you want to hear about. Anything? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing? Is there any? Can you make a suggestion? No. How about if we just all talk and put these mics away so we don't have to listen to this thing happening? Yeah, how's the... What's going on back there? Can you there? guys hear some background music? I love it. What? What do I do? Shut up. <laughs> well, it's coming out of these ones. How, how obnoxious is that weird noise? Very obnoxious. Okay, let's put the mics away. Can you hear us? Yeah! Yeah!
that's much better. And now we're a bunch closer to you. <laughs> okay, who's got a question? We got a question yes, sir. right here. I'm a 58 year old surfer. What happens when you're 70? What happens when you're 70? We don't know yet. I'm asking. What's going to happen? Asking me when I'm 70? I'm just, do you have a timeline? You... Um, I don't think about what's going to happen when I'm 70, to be honest. Yeah, I just go to day to day and uh, thank you, you know, whatever it is. That's, I'm still here to be able to surf and put my legs to action, my arms to action. But, you know, hopefully I'll be still surfing at 70, 80, 90. Yeah. Me personally, I, I don't think I'll make it that far, unfortunately. <laughs> I stopped smoking cigarettes last year. Ah, <laughs> yes. 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 And you, you know how I did it? I read this book called The Easy Way to Stop Smoking. <laughs> Oh, it's serious. I mean, what an idiot. I should have read it 20 years ago. But anyway. Straight in from a 20-foot surf and had a durry. Yeah, I can breathe now. Anyway, sorry for Duh. the people around me. Everyone's coming out. <laughs> it's all coming out. Come on. We got... How long could the uh, chopper stay in the air on that, uh, you know, the big far away one? Um, on, the, on the last one, the 80 kilometre one? Um, yeah, total love. It. It's um, probably about two hours flight time in total. Um, and that's kind of with a 20 minute commute, um, was pretty much it. They, they kind of they get to a point where they start sending us warning radio calls saying what level where we're at in terms of fuel. And it's really dramatic to have them in the background, you know, really it's exciting more excitement than it felt like. Yeah. Definitely, but um, I mean, they're absolutely essential safety tool as well in an area like that because a lot of the time you, you can't find somebody by water because the swells are so big you can't see them. So the helicopter will always hover over an accident and everyone will go to the helicopter. So as soon as the helicopter goes in, we go in. Yeah, no, that thing about the helicopter, though, it's so true. When, it comes, when you're in the surf and it's all quiet, and you hear it coming like tot, 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 you know, it's coming out. And then it's over you and your heart actually does start beating. I mean, it, it's been known to cause epileptic fits, which I've seen firsthand in a helicopter in uh, Canada. And a guy grabbed the thing and it was like, ah, 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 like this. It was, it, was, it was radical. Anyway, I slapped him which, and said, stop it. And uh, apparently you meant to let him go. Anyway, that's helicopters. <laughs> That's Dr. Ross. <laughs> yes, yes, in the middle here. I have a question. Uh, the difference in your boards, Tom, when you were riding big pipes, yep. paddling in versus some of the towings that chips, them, what were the differences in your board that you were using the sequence? Okay, at, at Pipeline, I was using a 7.5, uh, you know, quad fin, and um, that's a, that was a beautiful board showed by Pat Rawson, and then the second board was a a collaboration of, of shapers that came together and designers on a... Um, the board I surfed at the Turtle Dove was five foot five and it's very thin. It's um, it's same with pipe boards, about two and three eighths, two and a half. Whereas the Turtle Dove board's only about an inch and um, three quarters, an inch and, each, inch and a half. It's very, very thin. and uh, But, yeah, heavy. It's just solid wood, solid timber. So what I want to do is have solid timber all, through, all throughout. A lot of tow boards, we put weight on a light surfboard and that sort of puts the weight in a weird spot on the board and puts the board out of balance. So I wanted to try it with the weight distributed right throughout. And it's made out of Western Red Cedar, that board. It's a great coffee table too, that board. Is that <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I can coffee till tomorrow morning. <laughs> there was a question earlier here from this gentleman about what the challenges of working in 3D for you guys. Yeah, it's really, really hard. <laughs> really hard. I mean, we we wouldn't have been able to make that if we hadn't done similar things in 2D before. Uh, and whereas with 2D digital, you know, you pretty much just whack the camera on your shoulder and hit hit go. 3D is a very different beast. Um, you need two cameras perfectly in sync, and as you could tell, we had tiny little GoPro 
3D GoPros, which, you know, we were very fortunate yeah. to be in the right place at the right time to get our hands on those. And they, those guys were really fantastic for us. Um, and, and what an innovative camera, like just in general, you know, this kind of changing filmmaking and, and, and amateur to pro as well. Um, but trying to keep the water off the lens, all that kind of stuff was like an ongoing battle. Uh, you know, Justin masterminded an air knife system that went on the, the jet ski where there was comp a compressed air in a tank through a hose running to air blasters that would blast air over the lens to get water off the lens. Yeah, and, and that took about three months to build and Tom Carroll broke it in four waves at <laughs> Cow Bomber. So yeah, can everyone put your hands That's together me. for Tom Carroll, please? <laughs> You get that. <laughs> yes. Well, um, the question was, what, what do we rely on um, safety-wise when we're out there um, regarding vests and so on? Um, well, we're trying out, we're actually trying out um, sort of a prototype, you know, sort of gas canister, sort of inflatable, auto-inflatable with a with a ripcord and that's what happened on that wipeout at Turtle Dove. I went to actually the, the prototype sort of tore apart and the, the cord actually went around the back and I couldn't get a hold of it. So I'm down there fiddling around using my last bits of oxygen and that was scary because I just went, I just had to get up. Yeah, so this is a point, for 30 years we've used nothing but board shorts, right? Mm. And our oxygen in our lungs to to rely on. Um, now you've got these buoyancy vests to sort of rely on, and your extra buoyancy you're relying. Yeah. And Greg Long is one of the best big wave surfers in the world at the moment. And he almost died a month ago. And he had this vest where he's trying to pull it, and he's as fit and young, and he didn't smoke cigarettes, and he's, he's, <laughs> he was dead. He was, I think, clinically dead, and they he brought was, him back. He and his back. vest didn't go off, and he was struggling to pull that thing. Um, so there are some great developments happening though in that area, ones that are a lot more reliable, got backup systems, but it's actually just practicing with them in, in actually small surf and getting used to the, the equipment, but also just having a general PFD on that doesn't have any other inflatable, that, that saved my life, that's for sure. Having that buoyancy, at least you'll find the body, it'll float to the surface. <laughs> no, I mean, for insurance, right? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Well, um, that the, that question was about how fast are we going when we hit, you know, full Mac speed going down about mid face. Um, I think we're doing about 70, 75 kilometres an hour, which is we've we've clocked it. We did a a project a couple of years ago where we actually set ourselves up with GPS and we um, we clocked ourselves. So. That's a, that was a cow bombing. Yeah. Um, it feels like 100 mile an hour. Yeah. They're like, dude, try to do 80 mile an hour on the freeway and stick your head out of the window. <laughs> and, and that's what it feels like. Yeah. <laughs> and the bumps are exceptional. So everybody on their way home tonight, <laughs> get it up to about 80. And do it. <laughs> Feel it. Yes, right here. We're, we're talking, that was, the first question was, how many hours did it take to make the film? Um, collectively, because we cut four television shows and a 90 minute feature as well, we shot around 15,000 hours of 3D. So, sorry, 15,000, 1,500 hours that we finished. <laughs> but yeah, I, um, I never exaggerated at all about it. Anyway, so. <laughs> The waves were about 100 foot as well that we rode. <laughs> and they cut my children out of it. I mean, actually, See, one's... But what about Cannon? No, oh, it? sorry. But, well, both one of, one one of, of them's are. a, a uh, like an emo, death metal, beautiful daughter of mine. And my other son wants to be a UFC fighter. So, no, they don't ride so <laughs> my, my daughters, they, they just said, that's for dad. That's what dad does. 
they come in the ocean during the summer and um, yeah, they don't like the cold winter in, the, in Sydney. Uh, I mean, I guess I see so many girls surfing here and, and I actually point out, yeah, they all surf up Santa Barbara, they all surf down in Victoria and Sydney. I mean, you know, there's plenty of girls, but I couldn't get them in the water for long enough. And, um, but there's a lot of dancing. I'll tell you. I've got to do a lot of ballet in the, in the yeah. <laughs> I'm dancing in the, yeah, anyway, doing routines, right? <laughs> over and over. Especially with a 10 year old. Back here. Yeah, back there. Is that like a drum roll? Well, I, I think you saw on, the, on that wave where I went down at Turtle Dove, that moment where I, um, I came up to me and asked me, can you take the, the hand camera, which I hadn't had that much experience with, just there at surfing at um, the South Coast Bombie. But I thought, oh, maybe I shouldn't take it, you know. I didn't feel right, but I thought, okay, for the, yeah, I'll do it, okay. And then, then the wave of the day comes, and, and I'm like <laughs> going down this really bumpy wave, and it really throws you out. You've got to put your arm back and get that view that we really like, trying to get you guys in the action. And I, I just, I threw myself off, literally all my balance off in that situation. I usually have the back arm, you know, my trailing arm down the front here, really balanced over. So I've just got all my, all my weight over the, sort of in between the feet, the feet, almost over the front foot. And so this time I'm like... <laughs> I'm like, look at, whoa, doing a layback almost, you know. But um, that was, you know. I sh yeah, it does. It makes for an amazing shot. And uh, you'd see Ross put us in. The, he knows. Yeah, that, like the one at Shipstern, yeah. it's the same thing that Justin said, quick, take the, the handy cam hook thing. I was like, okay. The wave of the day, day came again at uh, Shipstern's. But, I mean, we got to share it with you guys, so it was worth it, right? But. It's always my fault when it's something doesn't fault, work right? out. Because as soon as we finished that wave, he said, oh, if I wasn't holding that, it would have been deeper in the barrel. Yeah. <laughs> See what happens? Yeah, but it is. It, the answer is, yeah, it is more difficult. It does... It's tricky. It's strange holding uh, a piece of uh, rod. The thing goes, whack! <laughs> we'll have one more question. Right in the middle, please. Tom dancing. <laughs> you, you can do it me. for you right now, though, if you want. No, that... <laughs> uh, that's for another night. That's for another movie. <laughs> okay, thanks, everybody, for coming once Thank again. You, One more round Thank of applause. You. Storm Surf 3D. Thank you very much.